really encourage you to know, ladies, don't quit on your child, because your child just might be something you didn't expect. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, th Spirit of the living God, let your rain drops from heaven fall afresh upon your people. Spirit of the living God, let your rain drops from heaven fall afresh upon your word. Lord, let me decrease that your spirit might increase. I pray, God, for transparency. It might see through me and see your son. But, Father, in case they stop with your servant, please send your servant to a detour, son, that I may show them the way to the cross. Nothing of me but all of you. Please, God, nothing of me but all of you. I pray, God, for three things this morning. I pray for challenge. I pray for conviction. Oh, God, I pray for the spirit of change. If your people are challenged and convicted by your word, they'll be changed by the same power of that word. Let your spirit have the right of way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, happy Mother's Day, and we will get you out of here quickly so you won't be blaming me that you did not get your meal. All right, guys, get your wives a meal, your mothers a meal, and do not say a pastor kept us too long because that's not going to happen today. You're going to be out of here in about 30 minutes, if that. Amen. Because get y'all brunch and, and beat the crowd. Mother, moms, when I was five years old, my dad gave me some money to buy my mother a Mother's Day card. And so I didn't know, so I went down to the local um, Woolworth and read a card and said, Happy Mother's Day, and I bought my mother her Happy Mother's Day card. And at six years old, my mom said, Don't you ever buy me a Mother's Day card. But don't say mama. She said, I'm not just a mother, I'm a mama. She said, Anybody can be a mother, it takes someone special to be a mama. And from that point on, at six years old, I knew do not buy my mama a Mother's Day card on Mother's Day. <laughs> buy her a mama's card on Mother's Day, or it was not going to be a very good day for me. There's sometimes there are mothers, there are mothers, or there, are, there are women who have children who are mothers. And there's women who have children who are mamas. There are women who have children who are biological, who are biological hosts. And there are women who are mamas who ride or die for their child. But then there's a the kind of woman that's going to do what they got to do for their children. And this morning I want to talk, I want to talk about, a, I want to talk about a, a, a do what you got to do kind of mama. How many of y'all had a do what you got to do kind of mama? And my mama was the kind of woman that if, if whatever she could, if she had to do what she had to do, I mean, if, it was a, if we was at the a and PM, at the a and store and I was acting a fool, and all she had was a, was a cereal box to reach for. She rash the, I get hips out of here with some cornflakes. She had to do what she had to do. She'd make sure I'd be adjusted with it. all things in close proximity. I was going to be adjusted because she was going to do what she had to do. And I thank God for a do what you got to do, mother, in my life. And so it was easy for me to find a, a scripture that matches to me that kind of woman. To go with me to Matthew chapter 15, if you would. Matthew chapter 15, starting at verse 21. I'm going to try to, my voice is getting better, so I'm trying to get, stay slow. Because y'all like me when I go slower instead of going fast. I'm going to try to remind myself to go slower. But Matthew chapter 15, verse 21. The text says, Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And verse, he said, Behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, have mercy, on me, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Verse 23 says, But he answered, Heard not a word. His disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. A do-what-you-gotta-do mother is all kind of mom. Is, 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 first thing she is, she's courageous. She doesn't care what the status quo quote says, she's going to do what she's got to do. The text says he was in a region of Canaan. Canaan were, was, not a, was not an Israel state. It was where Gentiles lived. It was not a state of believers. So therefore, this was not a believing woman. This was not somebody of the Gentile faith. And in those days, if your child was sick, your husband should be crying out to another man. You shouldn't be running down the street chasing another man. And if you were a Gentile woman, you definitely wouldn't be running around chasing after no Jew. Somebody say amen. Especially in that, time, in that, in that day and age. But when you got a, when you got a mother that's going to do what she got to do, she don't care about man, 
She don't care about society. She don't care about what's protocol. She going to do what she got to do because her baby is in trouble. And a lot of y'all love because see, there's something about a father. We ain't going to do that. Somebody say amen. Dad going to let, let that, that little boy, that little girl go, go through what they got to go through. My, my kids, um, we had rules. Um, you couldn't come home on time. You had to be home a certain time. And, 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 and where Ken would, I would, I'd be in sleep. Can't be worried about them children. I didn't care. <laughs> Can't care because that's what mamas do. And today, my son will call her, will call mama. Can you ask dad for some money? Why can't you ask her yourself? Because she know he know. I ain't gonna send him a dime. But if Karen asks me, send my baby some money. Yes, Karen. Because <laughs> mothers gonna do what they gotta do for their children. Period. And, and, and mother's the only one that'll be long suffering. Come on, y'all. Oh, my, my mother, my mother, my mother would would have to would early on in school. Or I took the train to school. My mother would work. She would go to work at night. She'd go to work from eleven from eleven to seven every single night, from ten to six every night. She'd go to work, catch the train. She's catch the train to to, to Mount Eden. We get on, I, had, I had to walk down to Mount Eden. She'd meet me at the train station, catch the trip with me to school, take me off, get, let me walk me to school, get back on the train, come back home, get some sleep, get back up by 2 o'clock, get on the train, meet me at the train station, take me back home. Because she wasn't going to let her son be messed up on, 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 on the city of New York, but her son had to go to private school because her, her mother told her earlier that, that this boy needs to stay close to God. In New York City, the only way you stay close to God was go to a private school, which was, which was Catholic school. So my, I've been in Catholic school my entire life, and so did my, my, my cousin Toy. We were just raised in private school because we were, we were not just like everybody else. So my mother made sure I went to a private school. And I want you to realize that um, we grew up in, 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 in a decent neighborhood, but we, we lived in a nice place, but we had to go up the steps through the projects. Y'all know what the projects is? Yeah. And, and, and we went to parochial school, and I think it was a rule that when you went to pro, pro, parochial school, you had to wear the most crazy looking colors because they want, so we wore, the, I, I, I wore the plaid pants with the white shirt, the plaid tie, and the green jacket. The pants were green, yellow, and, and red, with a little red, and so you wore a red jacket to match the little one red streak on the pants. And, 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 and now, I, I was going through the projects, plaid pants, white shirt, Plaid tie, red jacket, a little patch, St. Mary's Church, with my little Superman lunchbox and my briefcase, said St. Mary's Church. Going through the projects, and everybody in the project went to public school, went to PS 87, PS 102. Here I am, going to school, skipping, <laughs> Walk, walking down the street with my, holding my mother's hand, going through the project with my plaid pants white shirt, plaid tie, and red jacket. She had to do what she had to do because her son was not going to be just anybody. This woman, the text says she kept crying. It gives the, uh, gives the illusion that as Jesus was, now every time Jesus was someplace, he always drew a crowd. This text is written in the imperfect futurist tense. In other words, it means, it gives, it's talking about re, re, imperfect tense means repeat of, repeat of motion, repeat of voice. I mean, she said it over and over and over. So she kept saying, have mercy on me, son David. Have mercy on me, son David. I mean, she started way back on the hill saying, son David, have mercy on me. Son David, have mercy on me. Son David, have mercy on me. She kept saying it over. She went to the crowd, kept saying it over and over and over again. She wouldn't stop because her child had an issue. And a real mama won't stop. Come on, somebody here. Come on, mother. Because when your child has an issue, you don't care what nobody says. Your child has got to get taken care of. And you, you'll yell, you'll scream, but you're going to do what you got to do for your child. The text says she kept crying over and over and over and over and over because her child had what? A demon issue. And even, even look at verse 23. Even the men, the men said, Lord, send this one away. We, about tired, we, we, are, we are tired of her crying. Shut her up. She cries after us. I'm tired of her talk running her mouth. And Lord, shut her up. And, and Jesus said nothing to her. Because why? She kept crying for her child. 
And I thank God for mothers that, that in spite of what the, the challenging you may have with your child. Come on, mama, the cha- they, they, they're not problems, they're called challenges. You may have with your baby boy, your baby girl. If you just keep trusting the Lord and just keep on trusting and keep on pushing through, one of your child might bless you beyond your wildest dream. Because if your child comes to God and gets to know God and realizes that he's the apple of God's eye, he's blessed to be a blessing, he might one day become the blessing you always knew that your child was going to be. My mother was told that, 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 that your boy will never mount to nothing. He's always stuttering. He, he, he speaks too fast. He stutters and he, he has speech impediment. He can't talk. He'll never mount to nothing. You spend all your money on that boy, he'll beat nobody. You never forget, my mother said, baby, because I was stutter. She said, baby, don't worry about it. Your, your brain, your mouth can't keep it with your brain. <laughs> it's okay, baby. It's okay. You're just so smart. You can't get all your words out fast, baby. So it's, it's okay. Because I would go, she said, baby, come on, baby. Slow down. Let your brain catch it. Let your mouth catch it with your brain, baby. You're going to be okay. Now I know. As I got older, what she was trying to do for me, because I said, yeah, I am smart. <laughs> they, they, they just don't know. <laughs> but she was doing what she had to do to keep her child encouraged. Yeah. Courageous mother will see through the horrors of what society said. Man told my mother, he'll never get past first grade. He'll always be on the small bus. You know about the special, you know about the, you know about the, you know about the small bus. There's the big regular bus. And there's that little bus that comes by in front of the house. He'll always be in that special class at school. He'll always have that extra teacher because he'll never make it. And she said, not my child, because she was courageous. She didn't care what the crowd said about sitting her way. And mothers don't care what the people say about your child, about what you, you do, what you got to do to keep your child, give your child a running start. Don't give your child a standing start in society. Give your child the best they can. Now, if they make the wrong choice, still keep it open them to make the right choice. Because once they get to know God, they might change, they might blow your mind. Not only is it great, now look at the verse text, verse 23. Verse 24 says that, but he answered and said to her, this is, this is really important. He said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then he, he says in verse 25, he says, but she came and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Not only is it, is it, is it, is it God do what you got to do, mom, courage, but also she has compassion. She's compassionate. Um, look, 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 look at the text. The first time when, when the disciples yelled and said, Jesus sent her away, he didn't say nothing. He was just letting the moment, sometimes you have to let the moment take care of itself. Then the right time, he, he, he says to her in verse 26, says something, and go back, go back to verse 24. He says something to her to, to, to push at her. He says, I didn't come here for you. I came here for the lost sheep of Israel. You were Gentile. And I ain't got time for you. Go on. He, he, he's saying, how bad do you want this for your child? And I, I, I'm glad she's the kind of woman, see, the kind of woman that, that this woman is, the kind of woman that knows how to say the right thing at the right time. Because she could have got mad and upset because he, he was pushing her respect issue or her, 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 who she was. But he said, Listen, she, she, well, she got past that because she needs to still get her daughter healed. He, he said, listen here, Gentile, I'm not, I'm not here for you. But because she was a woman who knew her history. She knew her messianic prophecy because she called him son of David. And the term son of David is a messianic prophecy term used for someone who used for the one who was coming down as the Messiah to save the world. So she knew that this Jesus was the son of David. This Jesus was the promised Messiah. Therefore, no matter what he says, it's not for my downing, but it's for my building up. Because this is, she, this call, she knew that this one was the savior of not just of Israel, but the savior of the world. So therefore, no matter what he says, it may sound one way, but he's, doing so, but he's saying to me something to push me to another level because this one cares about me. Yeah. Sometimes people will say things to you, not to pull you down, but to build you up. Sometimes people will say things and will give you a gift. You know what a gift is? I got a gift from someone when we start this church. 
They said we would never make it past six months. That's a gift. Because the gift was, I'm going to prove you wrong. Come on, anybody ever got a gift? And, and I, don't, I, I, I love when you give me a gift to say what you, when you tell me what I cannot do. Because the Bible says, if God be for me. So, so, so I don't want to hear what you So when you tell me it, it, it can't be done, it won't be done, I, all I say is bless you and smile because, hey, because the God that I serve is more than enough. And you give me that kind of gift to do, to do it. The, the Bible says, let every, the God be true and every man a lie. And when you let God be God. And so she knew that what, she, what he said was not to pull her down, but to push her more. And it pushed her to worship. I missed you, I missed you, I missed you, you missed it, you missed it, you missed that, you missed that. You see, when people push you, they're not pushing you down, they're pushing you to worship. When, when the man told me we were not going to make it six months, I didn't cry, I didn't, I, no, no, no. I said, Lord, <laughs> y'all don't understand. I said, Lord, if, if, if you God all by yourself, you called us to pull this church together. You called to do this thing in Spring Valley. Will you show them, God, that I serve a mighty God? And, and so in verse 25, the Bible says she worshiped him even more. When a mother is challenged and pushed for her baby, <laughs> you, you, even, even in, in, in the animal kingdom, you don't mess with no mother's child. You don't, you don't, you don't, go, in the, you don't go mess with nobody's cub because a mama's someplace around. Because a mama's cub will act, you know, Come on, somebody here. Don't, 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 even, even in the animal kingdom, they, they, they know. Oh, don't come between no animal, no, no, no mama and her cub because they get different. <laughs> Y'all seen the scurvy channel animal, channel animal Planet? They say, oh, no, you, you, they go to a whole other stage. And, I mean, they, they'll, they'll fight, every, they'll fight the, big, the big male cat or they'll fight four, five cats because you can't touch her mama's cub. Something about coming against a child that pushes a mother to a whole nother level. Like they have this transformative form. They get this, they get this whole new out-of-body experience and become this whole new person. Be like, what did you say? And you'd be like, whoa. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen mamas become, I've seen, I've seen small, petite, pinky toe women become like Thor and, 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 and become like, you know, Good night. I'd be like, ooh. Because the passion they have for their child outweighs the moment. But this woman, passion drove her to worship. Because in spite of what they said, she worshiped and said, Lord, you still need to help me. And, and, and there's a lot of times, ladies, Mamas, when you instead of complaining about the challenge, learn to worship during the challenge. Because when you learn how to worship God through the challenge, God will bless you through the worship. Never forget when, when I came home from school and 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 and, and, and from my, it was, it was, I graduated from college and I, I from high school and I hung out all night long. Came home with my little proud for self and guess God got out of. Got, got my little, because back in them days, you had a high school diploma, you was doing something. Had my little high school diploma. I was a man now. Hung out all night long. Came home, and, and, and mama sit there, where you been? I said, what's it to you? And she slapped me. Hold on, hold on, y'all going too fast. I said, that's the best you got? If I could have stopped my mother, now, usually she would have been, oh, we got the iron, the broom, the bat. No, nah. I'm sorry. Right. Mother went into her room. My mom, my, my cousin, my mother, my mother has a little bitty Bible. It's by her bed. Got on, got on her Bible, got on her bed with her Bible. Said, Lord, the hands that held that kid as a baby don't work no more. Lord, the hands that wiped his first tear don't work any longer. Lord, the hands that held the sign, go, baby, go, don't work anymore. So, Lord, I'm putting my child into your hands. Lord, I'm no longer going to touch him. 
I'm alone going to check. Uh, Lord, I'm going to put this boy into your hand. If I could have stopped her sin, I'd be like, no. Because when you put your child in the hands of God and say, God, I take my hands off my child, and you put God's hand, and when God puts his hands on a child, he knows how it, uh, when you give your child back to the manufacturer, he knows the right adjustment to make. He knows what screw to turn, what plug to put in. He knows how to make that child do exactly what he's been designed to do. And, when I, and, and after God put his hands on me. Uh, but if she had not worshipped to take off, I still would have been the bad boy. But God had to have a way with me. My mother released me to his hands because she had compassion for me. Mothers, no matter how challenging your child might look today, no matter how challenging the situation might be, please don't give up. Please don't give up on them. No matter what they may look like, if you just keep holding on. And kids, I tell you right now, you better get right quick. Because if she gives yourself to God, if she puts you in God's hand, you're in for a journey. Because you can run, but you can't hide. Because the God I know will hunt, well, the God I know is a bloodhound. He's a magnum PI. He'll find you, and when he finds you, he'll adjust you to be what he called you to be. And when a mother releases you into the hands of God, you will be changed. Bible, you have a prodigal son experience and find yourself in a hog pen realizing, what am I doing here? So please, adjust early or prepare yourself for a hog pen experience. Not only is she courageous, not only is she compassionate, but also, look at the text, she's also creative. Look, look at the text, verse 25, verse 26, see, Jesus comes again. And he comes to her and he, she says, he says um, I'll tell you what, it's not good for me. It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, let me read that again to you right quick. I'm going to get real slow. I'm going to get real Baptist on you right quick. It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to a little dog. Now, that was today's woman. She put her hair in a bow, put some nails, take, take the rings off, take the earrings off, and she's ready to throw down and knock some side of the head because she called, you called me a what? <laughs> it'd have been fight time. Or she'd have been like, well, you ain't all that anyway, Jesus, and would did like that, and would a with a, you know, but a real mama, a real mother is creative and will take, an op and will take a challenging statement and flip it. i never forget when I, we, we had six kids and we was raising, and you know, no matter how much money you make, six kids, somebody say six kids, six kids. And so um, Karen, Karen liked the Heinz ketchup. And I sh was raising kids and we had and Heinz ketchup was three dollars and twenty-five cents. Well, Lady Lee was a dollar fifteen. She might say amen. So when I went shopping, we bought Lady Lee ketchup because Heinz was three dollars and twenty-five cents. Well, Karen went out and bought her little container, and she would take six kids to McDonald's until all six kids get four ketchups because McDonald's serves Heinz ketchup. So you know, so think about it, six kids, each child saying, I need four ketchups. <laughs> so Carrie had a jar full of Heinz ketchup at the house, and so I would make hot dogs, and I would go get the Lady, the, the lady Lee ketchup, and all the kids would be going to this jar, hey, what you doing? Mama said, we don't do Lady Lee, we do Heinz. <laughs> because Carrie told the children, 
We don't do Heinz ketchup. We, we don't do lately. We do Heinz ketchup. And she, she was creative and said, oh, McDonald's serves Heinz. Let's go there. And she went two, three times a week with all six kids to get a small, come on now, small fries don't need four ketchups. Come on, somebody here. But all six kids would take small fry for ketchups. Because she was going to be creative. And I'll never forget Friday, Friday nights was, was, was watch me call it night. You know what watch me call dinner is? You take Sunday's dinner and, and Tuesday's dinner and, and Thursday's dinner and you, and you get some rice. And you put it together. See, you make anything look good with some rice. Somebody say amen. Put you, put you some rice on the base of it and you scoop it up and you put it like there. She'd be like, ooh, that looks good, mama. And you like, you take it, you make it work. Because a mother had ways of being creative. We would we'll take your brother's clothes and put a patch on your, on your elbow and change the button and say, hey, baby, it's a brand new jacket. That my brother, baby, your brother jacket didn't have no leather buttons on it, baby. <laughs> baby, your brother jacket didn't have no, see, baby, he, you got a patch on your jacket. Your brother had no patch on his jacket. Oh, okay, your brother go, look, look at the inside, it's mine, it's mine. It's your jacket, baby. It's your gone away. You look good, good boy. You look good. She could make things that were thrown away, designer made. A creative mother knew how to take things and, and that were negative and flip it because she knew that her child had to realize they're significant. They're important. The creative mother would take a phrase, and, and, and my mother would, would, would work long hours and would be, be ridiculed and, be, and, and would. Her family would tell her that this boy would not amount to nothing and it was over and over again. Why spend so much money on this boy? So no matter what they talked about, how much they, doctors and people and family would say, he will amount to nothing. She kept on telling me, if you just know who you are, God will make you somebody. And she kept being creative with me over and over and over and over. And, and, and I, I thank God for the kind of mothers that won't take a no as a no. But take a no or delay as develop. These, these, these new mothers will, 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 will don't realize that God will push you. Sometimes the only way that you can go forward is to be pushed a little bit. Or to be challenged a little bit. Don't throw in the towel so quick because what you have right now don't look like what you need right now. Because sometimes it takes time for a rose to bloom. I don't, I don't, I don't buy my wife flowers that are, all, that, that are fully bloomed. I want to buy them when they're still like this here. I want them to sit in the house and let them blow up. And, and, and I, want, I want them to experience, I want to see how, how, they, how it grows them because I, I believe that I, I want to watch it bloom. I want to watch it, I want, I want to see God do things. I want, I want to see, I, don't want to, I want to buy nothing that's already done. Because God, I, I believe in watching God work and even in the flowers. So when he said this here, look what she says in verse 27. Ah, I love this. She said, yes, Lord. Real quickly before I even get any further, she said, yes, Lord. She could have said, listen here, man. Slap the heck out of you. Don't call me no dog. You may be Jesus, but you ain't got to get ignorant. But no, she still called him Lord. See, there's sometimes when the right words will get you what you need. There's sometimes when you're pushed to your, to, to your own inner being, how important, is, how important is what you really need is more important than what you say. She, she couldn't say, Jesus will forget you, Jesus, because if she had left Jesus, her daughter would still be what? Sometimes you'll say things out of anger and miss your blessings. Do not let the moment abort the mission. The mission was, my child needs help. She had two challenging statements. She had one, it's not for you. Two, you a dog. First challenge, I worship you. Second challenge, let me show you how I'm going to flip the count on you. She said, you yeah. she said, yes, Lord. You're right. I agree with you. Yes. But yet, Lord, little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Lord, you write about it. And now, now, now this, she's not talking about a big dog, but little shit shoes. The ones you put the little boat's bow on and, and, and you go get, get them groomed and, and, and cock a spaniels and you get them cute and little puppy dogs and hop around the house and go, ear, ear, 
like that, that them little dogs, and, 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 and them little dogs come to the tables and they sit under the kids' feet and they, and they lick the kids' feet and they play with the kids. And, and when the mama don't cook the meal, like the kid like the kid to go and, and do like this here for the little child. And, and she said, Lord, but even the little dogs that come to the table get crumbs from the table. And, and, and Jesus said by her, by her response of, of, of affection for the crumbs, he said in verse 28, he said, oh, woman, great. Y'all missed that, missed that. Now, remember, now he, he, he said this in the midst of Israel, in the midst of a crowd, in the midst of people all around him. That, that, that this is the first time he, he said that, he said this Gentile woman had more faith than all of Israel. He said, oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done to you as you desire. The Bible says the same hour, somebody say same hour. Her child was healed the very same hour. Not because of her attitude, not because of who she was, because of her faith. My mother was, was a very, was an amazing cook. Mother could come to your house and you can cook something for her. And she would say, first she'd say, oh, excuse me, um, what you put in there? You'd be like, oh, sorry, it's a family secret. She'd go, okay, may I have a little bit more, please? Mother would take that, that little dish and she <laughs> nutmeg. Pepperoka, cayenne pepper, a little bit oregano, and she she go home, go back next week. Want to try this? Oh, this is amazing! What is it? Just none I threw together. <laughs> she 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 had a she had a taste palate. That she knew, if, she, she, she knew if, if I got the ingredients, because what's in the ingredient is in the hole. So the lady said, listen, Lord, I may not be, I may not get the cake, but, but if I get the cake, if I get the crumbs, in the crumbs, there's flour in the crumbs. There's some milk in the crumbs. There's some egg yolk in the crumbs. Vanilla extract is in the crumbs. There's, there, there, there's, some, there's some salt in the sugar in the crumbs because what's in the crumbs is going to be in the cake. If, if, if there's joy in the cake, there's joy in the crumbs. If there's love in the cake, there's love in the crumbs. If there's hope in the cake, there's hope in the crumbs. If there's a way out of no way in the cake, there's a way out of no way in the crumbs. If there's understanding in the cake, there's understanding in the crumbs. I don't need the whole cake, Lord. If you give me a crumb, that'll do because whatever is in the crumb gonna be in the cake. And Lord, if you give me just a crumb, I'll make it on the crumb. You don't need the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Want some place and it was, it was so good you do like this here. You had, you had to get every crumb in there. You had to get every crumb because the crumb reminds you of the cake. I want to tell you today, your, your child may not be what you think your child should be. But mother, hold on because today he's a crumb, but tomorrow he'll be the cake. He may not be what he is to be, but give him some time. And by and by, he'll be all that God has called him to be. He may not be the whole cake, but he's a crumb. As long as he's a crumb, it's going to be all right. They didn't see who I was going to be. They didn't see a preacher, but my mama saw a preacher in the crumbs. She saw hope in the crumbs. And by the faith in Jesus, one day I became a cake, and I'm a cake for God. And she saw me in the crumbs. Your child may not be the cake. Your child may not be the cake. But ladies and gentlemen, your child is. He's a crumb. He's a crumb. If you keep baking the crumb, one day, soon and very soon, your child will be what God called your child to be. Hold on, women. Hold on, mothers. Hold on, mothers. Just give me the crumb, Lord. Just give me the crumb, Lord. I need a crumb. I need a crumb. How many of you guys need a crumb? Just give me a crumb. Just give me a crumb, Lord. My marriage is struggling, Lord. Just give me a crumb. My, my faith is struggling, Lord. Just give me some crumbs. 
Five some crumbs, the rest is coming. I want you to know right now, your life might be rough. Your life might be in shambles. Stop reaching for the cake so much. Just grab the crumbs. Stop trying to reach for the whole piece of the pie. Learn to appreciate the crumbs. Learn to appreciate the crumbs. It may not be a piece. It may not be the whole pie. But oh, if I can see a crumb of my child. Next week on Saturday, my son graduated from college. And when he got kicked out of school, I said, son, you ain't gonna make it. And then my Bible, my Bible, my Bible. My son says, my son said, Dad, thank you. I feel as you know, we don't, if I, I didn't tell you, no situation will just get worse. I guess your prayer is being answered. I give up. We were buffing, we were butting heads since the day I was a freshman because I wanted to be part of my world. You have showed me that if I just trust God, it'll be all right. He said, Dad, I want you to know one day, all your time and money going to pay off. Next Saturday, I'm going to hear my crumb name call. I'm going to hear my crumb name call. He is the third son in, my, in the whole generation on my father's side. I'm the first. He's the second one to get a college degree. Because why? I held on to the crumbs. Mothers, don't quit. Don't quit in your child. Keep loving them. Come tell your moms. The only regret, the only regret I have this, of my mother's death. She can't see her grandson graduate. But God told me this morning, boy, she'd be right there watching. <laughs> She's right there watching. She'll have a front row watching your son get called. Because she held on to the crumbs. You hear this morning? I can't promise you a cake. I can't promise you a piece of the pie. But I can promise you what God said. A crumb. And according to the text, the crumb's enough to heal your situation. You're here this morning and you just take the crumb. Put the crumb in God's hand. He's in the business of taking little and making much. But you got to learn to trust the little so he can make it to much. You're here this morning. You're struggling with your faith, you're struggling with God, you're struggling with your situation. I want you to know right now, I know a God that'll take your crumbs and say, oh woman, great is your faith. But the issue is, can you have the courage, young woman, to push through your struggle, to push through your issue, and worship God when you don't understand it? To be quiet when you don't understand it. And God will bless you. You're here this morning. I'm not trying to give you religion because that doesn't work. It takes relationship with Jesus Christ. Relationship changes you. Because of my love for my mother and what she did for me, she pushed me. Her presence pushes me never to embarrass her. Never to make her look bad because of what she did for me. Because we are in a relationship. I'm not trying to give you religion this morning. I'm trying to give you relationship with Jesus Christ. You're here this morning. And you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
This is the best day to come to know him. He's just not a day. He's a lifestyle. You're here this morning. You've been struggling, trying to get the piece of the pie, or trying to get the whole cake. If you, beloved, would just settle for the crumb, God will build a cake with that crumb and bless you. Because what's in the crumb is in the pie and the cake. But you're going to have the faith to trust the crumb. You're here this morning. And you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Son of David, have mercy. This morning, if you're here, as I begin this prayer, you may have tried this and you may have tried that and you may be analyzing this and analyzing that. At some point in life, you've asked yourself, why am I here? What does all this mean? Am I just supposed to live, die, and fade away? Or was I really made from monkeys and embryos? Is it really nobody that, that controls nothing? Was all this just a figment of my imagination? You want to realize that there's a God who said, let there be, and put things in motion. And one day you're going to face that God. And the only way to be accepted by that God is to accept his son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. I'm very narrow-minded. I believe Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through him. I don't need Jesus Christ as a crutch. I don't need Jesus Christ as, I need Jesus Christ he's my savior. I need him because he made me, he made me whole. I don't need him, I don't need him as, as, as an escape card. I need Jesus Christ because he, he, he helps me identify me. Finding Jesus Christ helped me find me. You're here this morning. You've been struggling about finding you. I guarantee you. If you come to Jesus, you can find you. You're here this morning. You don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Lord and Savior. The best thing you can do right now, not for your mother, not for your father. But the best thing you can do for you is to come to Jesus Christ this morning and let him be your Savior. You're here this morning. If you never confess Christ as your Savior, all you got to do right now at your seat quietly while we're praying. This is really part of the prayer. Right now at your seat. Between you and God. Don't look at me. Pray. But you feel your hand being lifted. It's not you. It's God. You're here this morning. And you do not know God as you're saying. Today you feel his presence. Would you please raise your hand, Pastor. I need Jesus Christ this morning. I need, I need, to, know, I need to know who I am. I, and I know it, Jesus will help me get there. If you're here this morning. You never confess your, you never confess Christ as Savior. Would you please just raise your hand and say, Pastor, I need Jesus Christ this morning as my Savior. And we'll start the amazing journey in hope that will change your life from this day on. You hear this morning, you don't know Christ, please raise your hand. Secondly, you may have been in church as a youngster early on in life. And some of the thing in church drove you away. It drove you away from church and kind of wandering and don't know what happened. It's kind of people did some things that, that you can't explain. You, you, you were mad at God by people. Those things happen. God didn't disappoint you. People did. And God says, will you come back home to me? I'm crazy about you. You're the apple of my eye. Come back home. You're here this morning. You want to come back home to God. Don't change nothing because you might change the wrong thing. You're here this morning. You want to come back home to God. Would you please, Pastor, I want to come home. Raise your hand. Come on back home. Don't, don't stay outside. Come on back home. Just come home to God. And thirdly, you may be a Christian, and, and you don't have a church home. The Bible says, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not be built against it. The Bible says we give apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers, for the equipping of saints for the work of the ministry. I'm going to call a pastor. And I believe about you the way God believes about you. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God said you're the apple of his eye, and God said you are blessed to be a blessing. And I believe it about you. It's my calling to pull the blessings of God out of you by the preaching and teaching of his word. And I love to do my calling. You're here this morning. And God said, this is your new home. We're going to be in covenant together. I love to be your pastor this morning. All you have to do.
That's only part of this church family today. We'll be, we'll be in covenant relationship, you and I together. If you're here this morning, be part of our church family, would you please just raise your hand? Pastor, I'm going to be part of this family today. We'll be together. We'll be, we'll be a pastor. We'll be, I'll be your pastor. We'll be in, in covenant relationship today. If you're here this morning, please raise your hand. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, please. There are people here I know, Lord, wants to come. You don't join on Mother's Day, Lord. You join when you call the join. So, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, they would, they would forget this moment or this day and realize the urgency of the right now. Father, please, let them know the urgency of the right now. This is the day. This is the moment, God, that could turn their life around. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, once again, if you're here this morning, you don't know Christ, please, I beg you, I beseech you, please raise your hand. You don't have a, you don't, you're out, of, you're out the ark of safety. You want to come back home, please, I beg you, please raise your hand. You don't have a church home. I'd love to be your pastor this morning. Please, would you please, please raise your hand this morning that God can start you on the amazing journey that will change your life. Please raise your hand. Father, bless those who are hearing the sound of my voice. Would you bless them and you keep them until we meet again. Father, you're so good and you're so faithful. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.